So here we've got a single cab Land Cruiser. Now, as you can see, this vehicle does get used. Now, the owner's had it for about four or five years and can't part with it, but wants to make it more enjoyable to drive. So as you can see, it's had a few accessories. It's got a Recaro seat put in it. It's got an overhead console. What we're gonna do is take the interior out. Most of this is pretty visual on how to get it out. The aftermarket headliner, you can see it's got visual screws. So we'll just drop that down. The sun visors, the seats, the carpet, the rear wall, the door trims, and then we're gonna line it with our insulation product. So we'll take you on the journey. So we've got the bulk of our interior out. The driver's side footrest is always a bit of a challenge in these vehicles, and it pulls up at a 45 degree angle. There's a good chance that you're gonna break the clips, so some replacement clips are gonna help get this back on. Now it's important when you put this guy back in too that there's, there's no room for packaging underneath it, so we typically allow a 15 to 20 mil clearance so we can drive this guy back home. The other trick in these is the airbag sensor here, which avoid unplugging it, but you can unbolt it and that allows you to free up the carpet that you'll be able to pull the carpet out around. So we're at a stage now where we'll pull the carpet out of this and we'll show you what's underneath the floor. We've got the carpet out now and you can see the extent of what's in here. There's factory extruded dampening material on the floor. Um, not much around the gearbox and under the seats, the rear wall has got nothing. Uh, you can see all the dust and dirt in it. So before we put this stage one deadener in, all this dirt and everything, we're gonna give this a vacuum out, blow it out with an air gun, and then we'll wipe it down before we start to apply that stage one. Under the carpet, you can see that it's got a uh, remnants of a cotton jute. Uh, we're gonna replace that with something that's gonna be waterproof and also our sound barrier, which is our mass noise line of light. That'll form the underlay. So thickness, you don't need to be concerned of. We'll remove this underlay and we'll put in the mass noise liner, light, and we're gonna skin this rear wall. Now we're gonna pull the headliner out. So you can see all of our Christmas tree clips, we've removed them, any grab handles. It's just tucked under the rear window rubber here. This should basically drop out. We've left the A pillars in, but there should be enough room that we can just slide this guy back. So you can see we dropped the headliner. There's nothing in here. So perfect for our stage one dampening material, which is gonna take that panel resonance out of here. And then we're also gonna line it with a foam, which it's important, the owner of this, being a businessman, uses it for work, needs to talk on the phone. He's got his mic up here, but he struggles to hear. So by lining all these panels, especially up here on this B pillar around the ear, it's gonna make it quieter and actually get some benefit out of that head unit and his phone system that he's put into it. So to install our stage one dampening mats, we're gonna start first with the roof and then we're gonna put our foam lining on the roof. Reason being that we're gonna stand all over the floor. There's no point starting on the floor, standing all over it. So just think about your approach on how you're gonna do it. We're gonna do the roof, the rear wall. When they're all done, then we'll come through and we'll do the floor. First thing we need to do is wipe down the surface. Now the roof is pretty clean on this car. The floor is dirty. But particularly with the roof, you wanna be pedantic because of the heat temperature that you're exposed to up here. This will reach around 80 degrees on a hot day. Um, what we've got is a solvent-based pressure pack wax and grease remover and just a clean rag. So all we're gonna do is spray it on and wipe it off so it's free from dust and grease and then our sheets are ready to go on. So our approach with the roof is first to work out our tile layout, where they're gonna go, whether we're gonna cut sheets. Now the sheets are 300 mil by 500 mil. If we lay one of them in here, they pretty much fit perfectly. So it's a matter of just working out by the looks of it, if we choose the center line here, we'll get one, two, three, and four. Now a question we get asked is, yeah, but what about this edge right out here? Now, if you picture this roof, say as a trampoline for an example, you tap in the middle here, there's a heap of panel resonance. When you get out here, the steel's got a lot more strength. You tap on it, and it doesn't have that pebble in the pond effect. So 
really, I'm going to allow for one, two, three, four here. And then by the looks of it, we'll get another two strips, just balance them out on the front section here. If we don't go right into here, it doesn't matter. If you do end up tucking them down in here, you're going to want to make sure that you get it stuck down. We'll show you a trick that we use with one of our trim removal kits to actually get in there and make sure you've rubbed it down. So we've wiped, wiped this roof down. Avoid touching the back face of the material. I'm going to leave half of the plastic on the back there just so I can handle it. I can see there's a centre line mark here. Now what I'm going to do is just touch this guy up in the middle. You can see there's a swage running. I've got two swages I've got to get into. Now I'm conscious that I'm not going to stick it down both sides and try and force it in. What I'm going to do is run my finger down just this middle one here. And I'm only going to roll out that rib. Then I'm going to get our application roller and make sure I push it in here, in theory, before it's stuck down here. So that'll allow that dampening sheet to shrink up, get good contact, and then we'll stick it on. So effectively, what we see here will be shorter, it'll be over. Just to show you what I mean, you can see there where that rib is. So we're going to roll it in as if you're laminating your school books. You try not to get any air bubbles under it. So we've got our stage one dampening mat throughout the car now. We're gonna concentrate on the roof and we're gonna put our stage two, which is our six mil insulator. It's 1200 millimeters wide. It's 900 millimeters in length. Now we're gonna apply this fore and aft of this cross beam. Reason being that this cross beam will date them out and have some reference with clips. So we don't wanna pack out and make the roof liner sit down. So it's six mil, it'll fit into what we've got here, the available package. So the easiest way for us is to measure length cut a rectangle piece there and do it again up the front here and then apply it now just to show you the methodology behind it you can see here the self-adhesive backing the glue is directly to the foam which means it sticks and it sticks really well now there's a catch when you're sticking it to a roof skin and you've got corrugated forms i've got this example of a bit of tape here if you try and stick over these ridges that are lows from the angle we're looking at and push the foam into it, it's got a memory where it's going to want to go back to its natural state. So in time, it's going to want to come back. What you need to do is roll it out as if you're if you're laminating this and don't stretch the material, but let it form into all the shapes. So over this length, you're effectively going to shrink it. So what I've done here is cut through the paper layer so we can peel both sides off. Now you can see I've slightly cut through the foam there. It's still connected. I'm not fussed about that. We're going to use this center line and tack it on let it hang over and then peel our paper out. It'll be much easier. So, we've got our center line marked on our roof. Now you can see we've got the paper revealed here. We can just slowly remove it and roll this into all these valleys. If you've got an area you want to try and tuck it in under, before you've put pressure on this, you've still got the ability to get it unstuck. It's a bit of a love-hate relationship. You can use a trim removal tool like this to feed it into those tricky to get into areas. Now there is a chance that at a big sheet, you're gonna get air bubbles. What you're gonna to wanna to do is knife that and roll that air out. So it is important, you're gonna to have to use something like a roller tool here, where you put enough pressure to compress the foam and actually get the adhesive to bite on. If you rub around this, it's like if you put flour on a bench and you rub around, you're gonna get 60% contact, not enough to get the adhesive to bite in. So get the roller, push it on, make sure you contact it in, make sure you get it into all these areas here, you won't have any problems. So now we've got our acoustic liner. 
which we're gonna skin our rear wall with as a stage two product. The foam's gonna set it up to help any sound waves that come in, soften it so they're not hitting rigid surfaces. So we're gonna fill in here exactly what we've done over the stage one deadener, and we're gonna stay off these top hat sections. So our sheet here we've got, you can see it's 900 by one meter. We're just gonna cut it down in strips. We can butt up the joints, which will be on one side. Seats are gonna fold forward, so you're not gonna see them. What you could choose to do is use the stretch carpet and then spray adhesive over the top of this and upholster it all if you wanted to go out and have it finished right to the edge. This is the basic stage two setup that comes in the pack. So I'll go cut this down. So to cut your foam, you've got two options. You could use a set of scissors. Now I'll just show you. If you do try and cut, you're gonna end up with jagged edges. So make sure you try and cut a smooth radius. Usually I find though the best way to get a nice sharp edge, you know, I'm being pedantic here, I've got a square and I'll set that guy up. Get a sharp blade and you'll find the foam will blunten your blade quite quick. So you're gonna use the top side, the bottom side, you're gonna go through blades. So I've already done some cuts on there. I'm gonna use the back side here. But you'll see there that it's nice and sharp nice straight line so if you want to make it it's a finished edge that you're not going to cover up with carpet or anything just use your steel rules cut it all square and then you can come back around if there's a finished edge like we know over here it's got a finished radius on it you could template it on with something on the back and then just come around and cut it and then you can end up getting a nicer edge on it. Another cheat is, particularly on the radius, is if they're gonna fall into something, you can cut it on an angle like that I've done here, you can see that. The visual face you'll see is this front side, so you've got a chance to correct that with your scissors again, if there's any lumps in it. So we've cut up our acoustic liner into shapes that fit over this. What we did to create that shape was just got a bit of plastic, traced over it, cut it out, that allowed us to make a few errors. You could put masking tape on here to if, or draw some dimensions where I was 10 mil short, overlaid that on the foam, cut it, and that's gonna fit in there perfect. We'll have a joint here. You can see where I've cut that one. It's slightly longer. We'll cut him down after we've stuck that on. Our rear wall, we've cut around all these obstacles. See, that one fits in there. Positioning it here, I'm just trying to work out which way we're gonna peel the back off and stick it on. By the looks of it, I've got location on all these brackets here. Yeah. What I'm thinking I'll do is peel the bottom up, lean this up so it's located, and then just chase the top up. Now the good thing with the acoustic liner is, it's got a membrane carrier on it, which means that it's gonna allow for a repositioning on the initial contact. So you can see here, I've just revealed half of the paper if I don't press this on too hard, I'm gonna be able to tack it on and pull it off. So, leaving this paper folded up halfway, when we're stuck on, we've got the ability to peel it up. So we've got it tacked down now. We're gonna use our roller here to get in all these valleys. Now it's pretty pliable, this product. So the good thing you'll notice, particularly with this roller, we've engineered it with a radius on the edge. Some of the other rollers that are out there, they're square cut, being a nylon roller, that they're razor sharp. If you do roll on the foam, you're at risk of tearing it. So this one, it's pretty durable, as far as um, it's not gonna affect the foam. Also, this shape of the back handle is gonna allow us to push it into all these lows, which we're limited to what we can get to with the roller. Now, another little tip for you here, to try and get this joint as tight as possible, what I like to do is start on that edge, touch the foam face, push it onto itself there and then stick it down. That way the foam's always compressing against it. If you try and stick it on this way and pull it across, it's always gonna to wanna to shrink back and you're gonna end up with that in the long term. So I'll peel the back off, I'm gonna to touch it on that face and then stick it in. So the order of our install here Typically I wouldn't do the floor first. I'd go ahead, finish off the roof, 
finish off the rear wall and then get in and do the floor. The reason I want to point that out to you is you can see here where the dampening sheets are butted up to each other. You can see everywhere I've knelt and if I had jeans on, I can see some on the side of my skin here. The rubber is compressed, bled out and stuck to me. If you do need to do the floor of the car and it's going to be a long build, we've got our foil tape here, which you can tape over these joints. This is a, a true aluminium foil. I'm going to go pick this joint here. So the beauty of the tape is that it's going to neaten this up and make it totally sealed. If you're doing a build and you need to wire the car after it, or you're going to get dust, that sort of thing in it, you can wipe this down, you won't catch any edges, you can work in there, it's not a problem. So it's not functionally required in here, it's more of a presentation thing. Typically on your vertical panels like what we've got here, more so the roof, I would go to the effort to tape off the edges just to seal it. The heat exposure that's going to get out there is greater, so it just helps seal it up and keep it contained. So in this vehicle, we found that the factory waterproof membrane behind the door card was damaged. We've got a product which is called our Door Restore Kit, which gives you the replacement, it's actually more heavy duty replacement plastic and the actual sealant tape, so we can recreate this, this factory product. What I'm gonna do here is clean up all this dust and dirt, follow that same glue path with our tape. Sheet comes as an oversized bit of plastic. This is a two door kit, which will give us a sheet about this big for each side. First sheet we'll cut, then we'll go around and we'll do the other side. So now we're up to our stage two, which is gonna form our underlay. So I've got a sheet of our mass noise liner here. Now this is a 1.5 meter wide by one meter long. We've got two sheets in this vehicle. This is a limp material. It's got a six mil closed cell foam on the bottom and it's got a two millimeter mass loaded vinyl. Now we need to cut this out as pattern. It's a universal material, so you can use it to fit any vehicle. Our goal here is to cover all surface as a sound blanket to stop that noise coming up. So think about any hole we put in it, it's like a bucket, it's gonna leak. Now this is removable to sit here under its own weight. A sheet of it weighs around four and a half kilograms. Now we'll make a pattern, we'll cut this and we'll put these in much like a floor mat, a little more extensive that's gonna come up around the tunnel. So an easy way to make a template is just get a transparent film, something a little bit heavyweight, ideally something with a low tack to it. You can then lay this in here the good thing is it's clear so what you can do is get it positioned even if you use a bit of spray grade adhesive and just tack down a couple of corners or tape them down it's going to tell you where the material is going to want to pleat or there's too much material in gather now, what I would do there is we'd mark this on mark a line up here give that a relief cut then we can go ahead and trace where that line is and then work around all these other objects here that we're going to need a cut work out your gaps on your edges then you can go away and cut this keep bringing it back tack it in get it right if you overcut it just put some masking tape on it and go again that way you can prototype it on this pretty quickly that you can just lay onto the mass noise liner and then cut it out. So here's our sheet, cut to size. You can see down here that pleat that we cut out. So the good thing with this material is, this being a full drive, if it's something that's gonna get swamped, you always got the ability to peel this out because this will just sit straight down on the surface. So we'll get the rest of the sheets. We've cut one for the driver's side and the rear. And I'll show you a technique here where we're going to overlap the two materials. So we've got both of our sheets of mass noise line to light in now. And the technique I wanted to show you here was overlapping it. So you can see here the extra thickness is going to build up under your carpet. What I'm going to do is find the point. This is probably the best bit to show you. Here. And I'm just going to cut away the foam. So I'm lining up that line and then down here.
So I can join the dots on these two lines now. Now I'm just cutting through the foam here. And what I'm gonna do is peel it off. There's an adhesive layer of glue that I wanna keep on there. So if you slowly peel this away, you'll see that yellow color there is a layer of glue. If you have trouble, like I've just had here, you can get a heat gun and apply a little bit of heat and that'll help you get it off quicker, but your other option is just to go slow and steady. Now we've got that adhesive shown there, we can just glue that back down to itself. So you can go through and do that on all your joints. I've got one here where it's overlapped. So we'll take that step down to that two millimetres, up through here, up across here. There's an overlap that we've allowed for on the transmission tunnel. We'll do that down there. So we've got our factory carpet out of the Land Cruiser here, and now you can see it's covered with a cotton jute or a shoddy style underlay. Now this is glued onto the floor. We're gonna go ahead and we're gonna peel this off. Now the reason we're gonna take this off is packaging. This stacks up at around 12 millimetres, and we've already put 12 millimetres in it. So the extra thickness is gonna to be too much. The other fact to consider with the nature of this four wheel drive, it's gonna see water, whether it's submerged through water or you're dragging water into it, this stuff's gonna soak it up. So we wanna take it off so we don't have those, those issues. Something to consider on the driver's side is this heel mat. Now not every one of these Land Cruisers has it. Some of them do where it's sewn in. Now to get your jute off in this area, you're gonna find that you're gonna to have to de-stitch it as such. Otherwise, if you cut around it, there's gonna be a, a lump there, which is gonna create a low everywhere. So usually it's not an issue because people are running mats in here. So the heel mat is not doing anything. The easiest way we've found to do it is just get a knife, find where it's sewn, and then you can just unpick it. So you can see here where we've cut the stitching, the mats come unstuck. Now you could go to the effort to sew it back on or you could glue it on. In this case, we're just gonna take it off because we're running floor mats here that we're not worried about a, a heel. 